Hey, I'm Joshua and I'm currently getting into fabricating parts for my BMW R80 custom bike. In my last video, I've built this little brake fluid reservoir bracket, but since this was my first time ever building a bracket for metal, I knew there were a few things that I could improve. And fortunately, Oliver, Drew and Stuart pointed out a few things how I could make this look even better. So in today's video, I'm going to follow their advice and share the three tips with you. My way to attach the reservoir to the bracket was to drill a hole through the bracket and use a screw and a nut on the other side. What Oliver pointed out was that I could have just cut a thread into the bracket and use the screw from the other side. And following Oliver's advice, this would look much cleaner. But I already have a hole in my bracket, so what can we do about this? Well, fortunately, I just bought a complete set of helicoils. This is quite expensive, so I'm happy that it comes into use more often than just once. Why I actually got this is because my friend Nicola and I came up with a much simpler solution to mount the headlight to the triple clamps. And I want to use the helicoil to reinforce the threads that I'm gonna cut. But since I've never used the helicoil before, this is actually a good test project. It would have been quite scary to jump straight to the triple clamps. What's good about the helicoil is that you can get a thread into a hole that's actually too big for the size of thread that you want to cut. What helicoils are normally used for is for broken threads. You have a broken M6 thread where the screw broke off, then you drill out the old screw and make the hole a little bit bigger, cut a new thread, put in a helicoil, and that reduces the new thread to M6, and you hopefully have a new good thread. Before putting a helicoil into this bracket, I'm gonna use this eight millimeter thick steel bar as a test piece. I've also used it to build the back part of the bracket. I'm starting by drilling a three millimeter hole to then go up to six millimeter to make it as close to the bracket situation as possible. Now that we have the six millimeter hole, I'm gonna use the drill from the helicoil set and drill it out to 6.3 millimeters. Now we need to cut the thread. With the helicoil set, you only get the thread cutters, but not the handle to actually screw it in. So if you're getting a helicoil set, but don't have a thread cutting set yet, make sure that you get one of those handles. Try to be as straight as possible when you start and just be patient. Whenever it gets very tight and that's roughly after half a turn, it's good to go back and break the little chip that has formed. Now we have the first thread cut that is bigger than M6. So now we're gonna put in the helicoil. Now the helicoil is in there, but we still have this little pin that we need to break off. And just like that, we have a new M6 thread. I love helicoids because they have saved me my motorcycle trip with my brother once. I had an oil leak and the super kind workshop has put in a helicoil overnight. I think this is a relatively good length because this piece doesn't really have to withstand any force. I just need to make sure that I screw it in the right way. can't believe this. I need to be more conscious when doing these things. And I thought about it before. I don't know if I've said it, but for me, it's so natural that the screw goes in this way because that's the design I had in my head for so long that I've put in the helicoil the wrong way around. And another big mistake that I've made is that I didn't cut the thread all the way through. It wouldn't have mattered because I'm gonna weld this side shut anyways. So now the problem is that this side is a little bit too tight for the screw to get in because in theory, the screw should go in from both sides into the helicoil. So what I'm thinking now, and this might be risky, is to drill out this side and then hopefully be able to still reach some of the thread. Nice. Oh, I'm happy that this worked. Oh my God. On the other side, I still have quite a lot of room. So I'm gonna put in a smaller one on top of this one. This still has a good start on the one side, goes all the way through, and then I'm gonna weld this side shut. All right, the hole is welded up, and when you do something like this, 
pay close attention that you don't heat up the edges too much because if you do, they melt away and then it's hard to fill them back up without destroying the edge further. I did burn away a little bit of this top edge, so I went down with the amps and just put filler rod on top of it without really melting away any more of these sides. What I also made sure was that I fill up all of the low spots because I noticed when filing this for the first time that if you have low spots, they're hard to get out because you need to take away all of the material to that level basically. Otherwise you always have a little mark. So the next step is to file this down and get back into shape. We're gonna link everything I use down below in case you need to get files or sanding paper, stuff like that. All right, this is already looking very, very good. Thank you, Oliver, for the tip. I really appreciate it. Whenever you have a tip, please just let me know down below in the comments. I am so grateful for everyone just putting in their thoughts and just giving me advice because something like this, I just didn't think of it to put the thread in there. Now, the next thing is to make this actually fit and shorten the screws the right way. It was last time, and that was also the first time I shortened the screw, I just cut it off. I was happy that it worked, but Stuart told me that there's a better way, so let's try it out. The problem with my way of shortening the screw by just bluntly cutting it off is that the thread might get messed up. And to prevent that, Stuart's tip is to screw on a nut first. That will then help once the screw is cut to realign the remaining thread. So you can actually see very well how much the thread takes a beating during the cutting process. Once you've shortened the screw and take the nut back off, look for little imperfections that you can then take off either with your hand file or with the belt grinder. That way you can make sure that you have a nice looking screw with a good start to the thread. It works both ways like a charm. Perfect. Thanks Stuart for the tip. So now onto the final tip that I got from my good friend Drew. Thank you for that one. He noticed that the hand files actually leave quite deep cuts into the materials. And also in some areas I have little kind of like marks or bumps that are still noticeable because the light reflects differently. So Drew recommended to just take some sanding paper and go over it with different grid sizes. Even if you have tiny areas that need special attention, try to work as big as possible. Because if you just focus on this tiny area, you then just wanna create another little spot that needs special attention afterwards. These round parts are the worst. I have these two lines in there and those are so hard to get out because filing in here takes ages. But it's these little details that make all the difference. This is what it looks like after the 180 grit sanding paper. You can still see the scratches on the surface, but I got all of the little dents and marks out so it already has a very, very even surface all around. Next step done, 320, already much smoother surface. I think I'm gonna go one more and then that should be it because my fingers are completely destroyed. This is what it looks like after this 600 grit sanding paper. It's crazy how much difference it makes. This step took quite a while, but the finish is so, so much better than the last time. For me, it was important to take my time with a 180 grit sanding paper because the 180 grit was perfect to get out all the dents and little marks. And that was also the step that took most of the time. So let's put it together and see how it looks on the bike. Wow, look at that. That worked very, very well. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I'm so happy that I got all of those tips from you. If you want to see how I've initially built this piece, watch this video next. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.